What's going on, everybody? We're going to try something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to be doing a deep dive here on Hero, this player in the top right-hand corner. Y'all know him. Y'all love him. He is a absolutely fantastic Zerg player, and I'm going to let you guys in on a bit of my learning process, uh, how I learn from these players, and uh, should be able to get a better view of of the kind of strategy, the kind of thinking uh, that Hero is doing uh, in these games, how he's uh, planning things out. And by in, in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and remove the opponent uh, perspective here. I want to try this out. We're going to cast this completely from Hero's perspective. And rather than really cast here and you know focus on the two opposing strategies, we're going to really focus on Hero. And his mindset, his uh, kind of planning and decision making in this game. And as you can see, he's gone for an overpool. This is not typical in this matchup. Going for an overpool is a real middle of the road build here. He's going to go ahead and drop an extractor after. And I don't normally do this, honestly. This is not. The way I like to play, I like to either go for something like a, a quick hatchery or I like to do a hatch and main or I do a nine pool speed. But I'm going to try and learn from Hero here. He went for the overpool. He went for the gas. He's going to be mining the gas. How many drones does he have on minerals? He's gone just to seven with a couple of pairs of links popping out. And his hatchery here on location. He will spot. Gets lucky here with the first scout. What is he going to see? Okay, we see the lings here. 2 minutes 38. It's going to be some sort of overpool from his opponent as well. Um, oh, no, no. Here's the lings here already. I think we missed that. So, this is like a 9 pool. We've got a 9 pool here with the lings at the front. And more lings are coming. We know that for a fact. So as the lings start to arrive here, he's going to set up a nice little wall uh, in between his hatchery and the ramp. And he should have speed, but it's probably going to... He would be expecting it to be later than his opponent. But as we can see in the production tab, maybe I should actually remove this. How do I do that? Um, maybe I can remove the production tab here. All right, I actually, oh, here it is, Alt-F. All right, so we can't actually see that. He's going to go across the map with his lings. A little bit of a wall here at the front. Now, it's possible that the opponent did an over-gas here, so he's banking on making a lot of, um... oh, he's going to throw down the extra hatch. Yeah, this is some sort of over-gas play. He has the, the spire on the way, and he's going to be banking on doing some sort of... Um... Mutilus timing with a lot of Mutilus popping out all at the same time. I can't really get rid of only the opponent's... Uh, <laughs> I can't really show Hero's stats without showing the other opponent's. So we're going to leave that up. Uh, that extra bit of information. Let's take a look at Hero, what he's actually doing right now. He's stopped mining uh, one drone on that gas. So he's only mining with two drones on the gas. And he hasn't, or he's, he's just gone to layer, but he is way, way behind uh, the layer timing here of his opponent. So he's going to have to defend uh, with spores. But will he go all in uh, for links? No, he's not going to just try to all in with Ling. Which I would, I, I actually would have thought that this would be a good idea right here. You can see he's just now thrown down a second hatch. He's only producing off of one hatchery so he does not have a whole lot of lings and no sunken colony so if you get up this ramp you can probably kill here as hero and we don't have an overlord in our base so there's nothing tell it saying that you know we're going to um to ling all in here but hero's not going to do that hero instead gonna pop drones we're popping drones bit of an uncomfortable situation if you ask me but 
I'm going to pop drones regardless. We've got speed. We've got our lair. We don't have the money to afford Aspire. Oh, there it is, actually. Aspire is done, guys. Where's the Evo? Where is the Evo chamber? Did we make that? It's interesting that he made the Spire here. Okay, there's the Evo. So he actually doesn't make the Evo until the Spire is done. That's good information to have. Um, I guess that's all right. I'm going to run the Overlord away now. He keeps the Overlord in there until the Spire is done. As you can see, one Spore at each base. Second Spore over here at the Natural. Lings are going to run back a little bit. And he's going to start that Spore right away here, I think, as the Overlord goes down. Let's take a look at the game state right here. 18 drones. Even with the two sunken or the two spores here and one spore in the main, he still managed to crank out quite a few extra drones because the threat of the Ling all in means that you can't really stop producing Lings. You have to keep uh, just a few drones here. Looks like he is going to start to uh, crank out a few more drones, but <clears throat> he had to make enough Lings to make sure that uh, a Ling all in couldn't kill him. And he's going to be making Mutas his hatchery should just be finishing up right around now so he didn't have the larva really to pump out enough drones so from hero's perspective there is a couple of different ways that this can go right your opponent could just smash out a lot of lings and try to kill you right here he could just be making non-stop lings um and banking on the fact that you're just building drones and spores uh to try and overwhelm you so, so a lot, some people will actually build a, a sunken here just to help out because you don't really want to be building pure, uh, you know, drones right now. But look at this. With the spire timing that he managed to get, throwing that down at a really good time here, he's already got uh, mutas on the way. He is going to lose a couple of drones, pulling them to the top here. And he lost the Overlord, which is actually really, really big. The fact that he, um, the fact that he let the Overlord come this direction instead of keeping it here is actually kind of huge. We definitely should not have lost that Overlord. It's just showing you that even pro players are going to make big mistakes sometimes, right? Um, Overlord popped out here. I guess he had all of his rallies over towards the natural. We lost an extra Overlord. We can't produce anything. It's really rough. To come in, kill another drone here. Um, but, uh, you know, the Mutalus number is pretty even, and he already killed one because they were pretty damaged. So he's going to get the, the chase down here, and this is really, really good by Hero. He just killed, like, three, I think, Mutas? Three Mutas down, and he's still got all four of his. So, leveraging the damage from the Spore to win that fight. Very, very nice by a hero. Now, this is where things get a little awkward. You can see the drone count is very low for a hero. Looking at your mineral line. Man, that's not a lot of drones. Are we going to go all in and try to kill? Stop this base from coming up? Or are we going to drone? and try to get into a better position. Looks like he wants to go all in. So back at home, it should be non-stop production of Ling and Scourge. We can't really afford to make Mutas right now. Pure Ling Scourge is basically it. We killed one Overlord. We might have killed two, actually. Um, maybe we're even going to kill another one here. So we're really supply blocking the opponent. And at the same time, we're going to basically dump all of our resources into cheap units super super cheap units scourge lings here we go gonna fly right in overlord kill no he's not gonna kill this overlord i really thought he's gonna kill this if he kills this again like the the opponent just can't make anything okay he will goes after that he kills it lings are going after the hatchery a little bit funny to see um not targeting down other lings but he does bring forward the Mutas, and there we go. Take out the opponent. I don't really know who this is, guys. I'm not even going to check. Um, it could be a pro player. Could not. But uh, we're just going to focus on Hero today. So 
that was game number one. Let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Check the chat. I'm going to be answering... Uh, I'm live on Twitch right now, guys, if you're watching this in a later video. So I'm going to be checking the chat, answering some questions, and uh, yeah, just analyzing these games for you guys. Okay, popping into game number two here. Hero and Zealot. We can see this upon its name. So uh, another ZVZ. I'm going to go through quite a few ZVZs. we got some ZVP and ZVT as well. Uh, but I thought we'd start out with this. Some of the quicker matches. Um, definitely that ZVZ going to be overall just a lot faster. There are some exceptions, of course. Uh, it depends on how you want to play, really. And I'm interested to see what Hero wants to do on this map. We're going to go ahead and hide Zealot. So we don't know what he's doing. Uh, we're going to hide the production tab as well here. <clears throat> So I can't really tell. Um, if you're really hyper analytical, maybe you could figure out what this build is from this. But just don't don't pay attention, and we will um, we'll go from here. Looks like a gas. Is this a overlord? Okay, over gas here from hero. I actually kind of like this on this map. I was liking this a lot um, for a time. I feel like the entrance is pretty darn hard to break through if you have good positioning and it's pretty easy to get good positioning on this map uh to get like a really tight little line of uh, zerglings there at the front very very simple so you go gas you make another drone uh first you go overlord then you make gas then you make another drone and then you make a uh, pool and then you start to saturate your gas and you just keep making drones up to 12 so we're gonna go to 12 here and then we as soon as we get to 12 we save larva and we pop four lings and then we hold this tiny little choke so overlord in a spot that there's nothing in the top left still doesn't know where he is right now or what build he's doing and hero he's just gonna wait at 12 lings are gonna pop and try to hold this layer immediately. You don't do ling speed with this build. No ling speed here. Um, just the layer. And you're going to save up money for a second hatchery in the main. Uh, probably right there. If you can, uh, you want to move the, the larva over to the left side and build the hatch right there. So that if you have to build a sunken, it's going to cover that hatchery. I, I've lost games before where the hatchery was like a little bit too far out. And then the lings are able to hit the side of the hatchery and, and you kind of lose it. It's, it's pretty pretty painful. So, making the little wall in. Very, very easy to do here. You can just click the egg uh, to get the first ling there. And then you click this egg and then you click this ling. Click the egg and then click the ling. And then you get a, a really sweet little wall there. There's the second hatch. So, over gas build, guys. The concept behind this is not very hard to understand it's just we want as many mutilists as possible right when the spire pops that is the plan that is it as many mutilists as possible it's going to be something like five or six mutas uh if everything goes according to plan which it never does usually we get some pressure uh we have to build sunkins or extra lings because um if you don't build extra lings and he's doing something like 12 hatch and he attacks in uh, with two hatcheries worth of lings, uh, full ling production, you're going to end up getting broken. Even if you've got the perfect wall here, you're going to get broken. Uh, if you went like nine hatch, similar thing, you're going to get broken. He hasn't sent out any lings here. He's being very conservative with his lings. I actually thought this was a mistake. I did this before. And I had some bad games where I, I just didn't know what the opponent was doing. So I started sending out one ling. But looks like Hero here. Um, he's just going to keep all his lings back at home. I thought this was the right play initially. But I actually changed my mind later. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it is the right play. So we're going to see a lot of lings here. Instant sunken. I think we need it. Instant sunken. There it is. Doing a good job kiting here. Fighting. A drone is being pulled as well. Okay, so this is scary. This is very, very scary. 
We're not sure what build exactly this is, but that is a lot of lings. <laughs> We're building full-on ling production right now. We need lings so badly, but we might actually just lose straight up because this is way too many lings. The sunken's not done. And he's brought a drone. This drone is so frightening right now. Because if he builds a if he builds a sunken somewhere, like here, out of range of this sunken, but in range of all of our eggs, he can just target down our eggs. So we might actually see Hero just straight up lose. And this is a way I, I've lost. <laughs> I've lost this way so many times. He does just tap out. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's rough. That is rough. Zealot, I guess he went for like a nine cool here. Uh, I was kind of peripherally paying attention uh, to the uh, structures or the, the um, drone count here. It seemed like he did something like that. But yeah, he did end up going all in with Lings. Pure Lings on the way. Even two drones. Wow, he sent two drones. Dude. Zealot. Kind of a crazy build from him. Kind of wild. I'm actually tempted to go back and, and watch from his point of view. Let's actually do that. Let's do that. Let's see what he actually looked at. I'm not a big... Like, I, I don't think Zealot is a great person to learn from, but I'm I'm really curious. Let's watch it on two times speed and just see what he saw and his decision making here. Because I don't... I don't know if he even had any idea what was going on with his opponent. Okay. Tricks out. An extra drone. Ah. 10 hatchery. Very interesting. I haven't really seen this build. This is not a thing, I think. Huh. Gets a overlord. Makes a pool. Drone. Gas. Huh. Okay. He hasn't seen anything yet. Still nothing. Gonna make drones. Start mining gas. Wow, this is a very strange build, guys. But he is gonna have a lot of lings. He's not actually building lings right now. What? Okay, there we go. Maybe he's waiting for... Yeah, he's waiting to build these both at the same time in case... In case there was like a nine pool coming in. If one ling... If each egg pops... Separately... Here, you can surround and kill... The lings as they pop out. But if they all pop at the same time, then it's a little bit harder. Um, the lings can actually do a little bit more fighting. So, I like it. Starts the lair. He's sending out lings everywhere. He's gonna check. See what's going on. And he sees the wall. Okay, he sees the wall. He's got a, an overload on the way so that he can go past 18. And he has ling speed. Does he just pull off of gas immediately? Yeah. Okay, so he pulls both the gas drones and he goes all in. Interesting. So he, he decides, he says, I don't like what I see. You're going to just sit there behind a wall. I imagine you're going for some sort of, you know, teched out gas first build or something like that. Um, I don't want to deal with all those mutas and uh, the early spire. So let's just go all in. We've got the super fast hatchery. It's not a nine hatchery. It's a 10 hatchery. About the same thing. Uh, and he is just going to bulldog him with the drones. Very cool. All right. Interesting game there. Interesting game. Okay, our next game here. We've got Hero in the bottom left. And I don't know who this is in the top center. We're going to go ahead and remove him. Um, <clears throat> We're just going to be taking a look at Hero's point of view if you're just joining the stream. And uh, just trying to learn from this guy. He is uh, a fantastic player. It's a bit of a deep dive here today, guys. To start with an overpool man after my own heart overpool very very good very very strong way to play 
gives you a lot of flexibility. And, uh, yeah, it's good for fighting off these, um, these are the builds. Let me see. Can I, can I get rid of this production tab again? There we go. All right. I don't want to be spoiled. We're just going to have to be vigilant here, picking up what's actually going on. So he tries to hide the drone. Unfortunately, probe is just waiting here. That's bad play actually from the Protoss player because you don't know if you went for like a, a nine pool speed or something. And if you don't go in and check, um, if suddenly links come and you haven't started a uh, cannon yet, you just die. So it's a little bit silly, but he brings a second uh, drone out. Luckily, the probe doesn't decide to throw down a pylon. I find it the most annoying when they throw down the pylon here, especially when they're going gateway first. Very, very frustrating. Uh, it does cost the same as a zealot, so it might slow down the zealot a little bit, but it just forces you into such an awkward position. And it really doesn't, you know, have much awkwardness for the Protoss player. They just cancel it. Once you put down the hatchery over here, they just cancel and they're fine. Here's the first zealot. Uh, he hasn't spotted the opponent yet, so he didn't know if it was a, a pool or it was it a, a forge or a, a gateway opener. And here, looks like he's actually going to try and target down the probe. I like this. The probe... Gets, if it gets two hits and the Zealot gets two hits, the drone will die. So you're going to see him like target one drone here, probably this one. And the Lings are popping out here, but we need to pull this back so insanely fast. It's going to like it, it. It's crazy how quickly we actually have to pull this back. Um, the moment it gets hit, you have to pull it. Otherwise, it will get hit a second time. So let's see. It does lose one drone. Um, that is truly unfortunate. You never want to lose a drone with the overpool. And I think this is just down to greed. A little bit of greed from Hero. He only built two lings, just one set. Um, he will chase down this Zealot, but he is already in a very bad, very bad, 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 bad position. So um, we're not going to be feeling good from here. Very good job stopping that uh, Zealot. But I mean, things are already kind of spinning out of control right now. It's like the Zealot's actually going to run home. <laughs> He's got like one HP. Let me see. One. One health. Holy crap. That is crazy. Yeah, that actually might get home. Ooh, is he going to get another drone? Nice pull away. Another drone going to get targeted. Oh. Jeez, that was close. All right. Overlord is in here. We need to see the uh, forge. Where's the forge? Where's the forge? We need to see it. Go, 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 go. There's no forge. All right. He might actually ling all in. He might actually ling all in. Let's see what hero's decision making is. He's already built. How many lings? We've got six. Are we going to start more? Well, we have to get this overlord first. Drone, drone, drone. So it's actually, it might be doomed. He might not actually be able to do Ling All In, even though it would be strong. This is such a big choke. This is a choke as well. Oh, this is a hole. This is a big hole. And the forge is not even close to being done. So you might want to try to run around. If these zealots are heading out on the map, you might want to try to run around and get in. But it looks like he's going to pull these back. Even if you, even if the zealots go across the map, if you run around and get in, you just make links back at home and they should be ready by the time the zealots arrive um, to be able to hold that off. So looks like he's going to make the wall. That's fine. Good thing we didn't make any uh, extra links here. We just went full drone. Full, full drone. And he's got a second overlord in here as well. I'm always um, curious about Zerg players when they decide to send in a second overlord. You really want to see the forge timing. But the forge timing can tell you most things about what the build is actually going to be. Waiting for this to start spinning. Very important to see if this starts spinning here. Cannon. See gas. Cybercore. Nothing spinning. Still not spinning. He's got to have gas by now. He must have gas by this point. Speed is on the way. He's just going to pull out now. 
there's the spinning uh, forge. So around five minutes. It's nothing too crazy. You can see all the pylons, so I guess this is the proper spot to to, to sit. There could be a Stargate thrown down here, but there it is. He sees it. Everything's well and good. He's tracking these zealots. He sees about three zealots coming. He will need just a few extra links because speed is on the way. And we know that plus one's not going to be done. Links are going to be the option to fight. So four zealots here. You definitely want a drone. But you want to kill these zealots. You don't want to let them get home now. They've committed this far across the map. Uh, and he could just pull back and try to run home. But we do not want to allow those to get back home. We want to kill them now. Because we've actually been forced to make quite a few lings. Um, it is time. We need to actually kill this. So they're going to run. They're going to make a run for it. Let's see if he can get these, uh, these zealots here. They are booking it back across the map. But they are not fast enough. Link speed is done. A fifth zealot comes out. That's just... This is... This is a present. This is a happy birthday to Hero right here. Then another Zealot comes forward? Hell yeah, we've got so many links ready to fight this. Um, we're just gonna be popping drones behind this. We do need an Overlord. Hopefully he's got that on the way. Yeah, it's right there. As soon as that pops, it's just full on drone. Because as soon as you kill this, this is everything that the uh, Protoss can threaten you with on the map, on the ground. There's gonna be a, a Corsair out soon, of course. But this is the, the entirety of the ground threat here. Now, I don't really like building the Spire here anymore. I'm a much bigger fan of building it, like, here. If you can build it behind the minerals, it's even better. Um, but just putting it not in the main base, I feel like, is good. Because so many times, um, the there will be, like, a drop, like a DT drop or something, and they always focus this down. Um, or run by, and they always focus this down. So I like to put it in the natural these days because I feel like they never really uh, target it in the natural Protoss players. They just don't do it. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but uh, from my experience, they just don't. So we have to kill this. Um, killing it uh, is probably an inevitability. We just don't want to lose too many lings while we're doing it. This is a pretty good job here the Protoss player is doing. Um, but, you know, here has got the numbers. He will eventually overwhelm that. That was not a bad trade for the Protoss, but now there's no pressure. You can see there's one Zealot here. One. We've got one Zealot. All drones from this position. All drones. No second gas. This is about the spot where I get uh, supply block. <laughs> like... I make all the lings, I kill the zealots, and then I can't make drones because I'm supply block. Yeah, that's my problem, but um, it seems to happen quite often. Something to fix, something to work on. While you're making those lings, you gotta make an overload as well. So, the Protoss player is blind right now. He saw all the lings. He's pretty sure that there's no Hydras coming. Where is that Corsair? Okay, there it is. Corsair is out now, finally finding these overlords. They have been pulled back quite far, and actually the Scourge are going to get here in time. Wow, he's not even going to lose one overlord. Dude, I always expect to lose one overlord at least. And he might kill the Corsair too. Oh, it's close. Or, uh, Scourge are really dumb. Never going to catch that. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe you can catch the one that's popping out. It's outside of the range. It's outside of the range here. I think it's just going to fly away. Yeah, you can't catch that. Nice try. Nice try. Is what it is. Uh, making armor. And he's got the second gas. Okay. S still six hatch. Six hatch with three gas. I guess... You know what? I guess you can do this. Generally... The understanding is that if you're gonna go for Muta, you need a couple of sunken. So you're not gonna get the fifth or the sixth hatch. You're gonna get a couple sunkens here, a couple sunkens here. You know, get the Hydra Den, get the Evo Chamber, make a wall, make a little wall here as well. But since he killed all of the zealots with that big Ling explosion, he's just gonna take huge liberties here. And 
build nothing but Muta and Scourge, it looks like. He doesn't even have a Hydroden. There's no Hydroden here. It's a little bit risky. Um, but I guess in the current game state, this is the right decision. Very interesting. So we see another, you know, five Zelts come out. Now they have plus one. They're a little bit more scary, but we got Mutas on the way. Nothing to be uh, worried about here. Just going to send one Zealot forward. That will get cleaned up. And five, six Lings on one Zealot is still a good fight for the, the, um, the Zerg. He will throw down a Sunken. So he does get one Sunken. Um, and one here. So that's bare minimum. Absolutely bare minimum. Uh, here comes one Zealot. Over here. Might get a drone. No. One drone. No. Wow. Nicely done. Going to fight with these Corsairs. Does get two of them. That's a big win there for Hero. Hero now can fall back with these Mutas. Bring some more Scourge to bear. And when are we going to throw down this Hydroden? There it is. Hydroden does come down. He does want to go six hatch Hydra eventually. I like this positioning right here. This, to me, is so much better than what I'm doing. <laughs> it's so much better. I usually put the Evo, Evo Chamber here, and then I put two Sunkins there. Like as close to the wall here as possible, and then right behind it. The Zealots can kind of run around a little bit. There's this is block this does block, but the Evo Chamber is not quite big enough to fill that space. So there's still a little space here. But this fills the space completely. You could try to come around the back here. Or you can try to come through here. But the drones really block this nicely. I like doing it. I was doing it this way. Because you've got the two sunkins. And then when you pull drones from here to here. They go through this spot. And then you can stop them. And it really bugs out the, the zealot's AI. So I guess both are probably good. But if you're going to go just one sunken. I think this is probably better. I like it. Very nice uh, positioning, nice thinking here from Hero. Um, I believe this is not Zealot type, but with the egg here it is. Uh, it, Hydra on Hydra Den on the right hand side or the left hand side is Ling type. If you put an Evo Chamber here, it's Ling and Hydra type, uh, or Hydra and Zealot type, excuse me. But he's gone for the Hydra Den here. Let's see how that goes. We don't know where the Zealots are. We're going to head over here towards the natural. See if we can find out. Where is the army? How many mutas? Seven mutas. Going into the main. We have to check to make sure that he built enough cannons. Alright. There's two cannons there. That's a pretty good amount. See if we can connect some cor uh, onto some Corsairs. He's going to pull the trigger. Um, jumping right on top of these cannons. Sees the Archon, he's going to have to back away. But there is a wall here, right? This wall right here is actually really going to hurt the Protoss player right now. Because we killed that cannon, the Mutas are going to be able to come in here and shoot from this angle. And there's not a whole lot that this Archon can do unless it comes all the way around. So that's going to be a pain. He is going to have to, I think, force that Archon to move all the way around. Um, but a lot of probes are going to go down. No, he doesn't. He actually tries to bring it back. Oh, there is one gap. Okay. Okay. So there's one little gap here. That's good for, for Protoss. He is going to be able to bring that through. But we've done some damage. We're going to back off here. Back at home. Just Hydra production. Pure Hydra production. Plus one. Speed. And, uh, of course, overload speed as well. Very good play here. Very, very good play. Just four meters left, so you can't actually one-shot any of those probes. But look at that. GG. He just taps out. Holy cow. Dude, 51 drones, by the way. Just the macro of Hero forcing this Protoss player to leave the game. Good god. Really good, impressive stuff here from Hero. He droned so much. So, so much, but still had this many Hydras and, and Lings ready for the counter. Very, very good stuff here from Hero. I feel like I'm learning a lot right now, guys. My brain is increasing in density. 
the folds in the brain are, are improving right now. Where is he? Where is he um, rallying? It looks like he's not. He doesn't have rallies. I'm not sure about that. Really, really nice stuff from here. Let's jump on into our next game. All right. Let's take a quick peek at some ZVT here. Got a random Terran player. Doesn't really matter. We're just focused on this man right here. Hero. He's the bell of the ball right now, guys. Hero is a fantastic player and... We're going to be taking a look again at his POV. So if you like this type of video, make sure to leave a like. And uh, come check me out on Twitch. Give me a follow if you can. Really appreciate it. We're streaming this live right now. Uh, I think we've got a couple of viewers. But um, yeah, we're working on it. Trying to uh, make this our full-time gig. So that would really help out, guys, if you could do that. I'd appreciate it very, very much. Now, let's talk about Zerg versus Terran. Because this matchup is giving me a lot of headaches recently. And I would love to see just the dance, the brilliant dance that's done by these Zerg players versus Terran. Uh, as they kind of playfully dance their way through the incredibly difficult early and mid game uh that has that, that is what terran versus zerg has become man terran versus zerg is so scary it's so deadly and difficult it, it's uh it's really the most difficult matchup uh, bar none i feel but look at this hero is going to throw down an early pool with the extractor so he is a little bit tired, maybe, of getting eight raxed. He is going to have uh, link speed very, very quick. And he's going to potentially punish an early CC. Uh, CC first. Or uh, an eight rax. If there is an eight rax in the middle of the map, he is potentially going to shut that down very, very hard. We'll see if that comes to pass. Four links are in production. Will he go to six? I feel like you do. Oh, no. Okay. Just four. Four going to be the magic number here. And right on into speed. Or will it be lair? Looks like lair. So, straight on into lair here. Going to catch the SCV as it comes in. Oh, he almost got it there. He does get it. That's big. Getting that early SCV is amazing. Because now the Terran player has no idea if Morelings are coming or not. He's going to have to prepare extra here. Uh, there's only four Lings. So it's not a huge commitment. But the Terran player is going to have to play as though it were a big commitment. So speed is going to be on the way. And our second hatch is just about to finish. So when you're playing this style... Uh, as the Zerg player, from my understanding is you do not want to lose these links. We've sacrificed a lot of economy to get this out early. To get these links on the field early. We've done the job that they're meant to do, but they're not done yet. We've we've shut down a potential 8 racks. There was no 8 racks. We've killed the, the opponent's SCV, scouting SCV. But we need to keep these alive. Because we need to keep tabs on what's going on at the natural. And we need to threaten the run by here into the main. Make sure that he doesn't move out with naked marines. And when he does move out, we want to make sure that we have the option to run by. Or maybe, you know, snipe something that's at the back. Kind of slow down these marines. Because, we, because we've because we sacrificed the economy early here, we cannot afford to build two sunkens here. We just can't afford to do it. So, we have to keep these links alive. These links are incredibly, incredibly important right now. So, if you're, you're, if you're going to do a build like this, you must keep these alive. So, you can see, being very cautious with these. Did he see an SCV? I actually didn't... Uh, 
didn't catch that. There might have been an SCV that got sent out after um, that first SCV died. There, oh, oh, Marines. Marines are going to catch the Overlord. <gasps> These Marines, dude. Are they actually going to get this? Oh, my God. That is horrible right now. That is absolutely horrible. This is worst case scenario for Hero right now. He He's going to do something desperate. Because losing that Overlord is brutal. We did not start another one. There's no additional Overlord coming here. We just got our Spire. This is such a tight build with that low economy. This is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible right now. This is a really good play from this HBQ player. Not sure who that is, but that was a very, very good move to catch that Overlord. He planned that out. He timed that out perfectly, perfectly to catch that. Now we're going to come in here. We might get a Marine. We might get a run by. But now um, we don't know if those Marines are heading across the map. They could be. Looks like he's going to go after the gas SCVs here. Good kills so far. Uh, can't slow down the engineering bay. He could slow down the academy. He's not going to. Gonna run away here. Try to draw the Marines as far away into the back of the main as possible. Run around. Link speed is done. More opportunities have arrived. Let's take a look at the production here. He's got to build two overlords right now. He wasn't able to drone up to what he would like to. Uh, he's just going to save, I think, some larvae here. He needs to save larvae. Uh, because he's really not going to have a good timing with his uh, mulas if he doesn't save larvae. So, another SCV goes down. Really, really good. This is so tough to do while everything's going on back at home. We're trying to hit that timing. He's doing a very good job. Saving the larva here. We're going to have about five mutas. So not the worst in the world, but the economy is just not there right now. The economy is broken. Going to go after this one last kill. Ah, unfortunate. Gets caught on an SCV there. Wasn't able to run through. And it's going to be all in muta from here, I think. There's really no other choice. We've got hardly any economy. Three drones here in the natural. Do we have full saturation here? We do. Nine drones in the main. Three in the natural. That's just enough to build completely all in muta. Let's see if he starts the plus one. There it is. Plus one on the way here. Uh, this, things are just going to slowly ramp up um, as that plus one progresses until that hits in which, at which time he's probably going to just dive really really hard and try to kill all the marines he is going to get here before the missile turret's done that's really big um killing off this missile turret before it starts i think he might just win now the timing is so crisp here for hero and the the lings delayed just enough slowed down the terran just enough that we're going to be able to get in here and force the GG. Very well played here from Hero. Dude, this was a terrible situation for him. Losing that first Overlord. The Ling run by is really what saved him here. And that's the reason why having those Lings alive is so important. He got the Ling run in. Killed the Marine. He killed a few uh, SCVs. He's delayed things just slightly. Even though the eBay was done. He was going for plus one. And he was being a little bit too greedy. He didn't go for additional missile... Or he didn't add the missile turrets on fast enough. As you can see, we're just before six minutes. The mutas are already here. And that is enough for Hero to take this game. The timing was slightly off for the Terran. And although he played really, really smart killing off that Overlord, he doesn't have the, the clarity of mind, the game sense, the star sense here to have those turrets up at the right time. He was a little slow. And so, Hero's going to take this one. Really, really nice game. All right. So, a rematch here between Hero and HBQ. Once again, 11 pool. 
Or is this 11 pool? I think so. I think this is 11 pool. Yeah, this is what it's looking like. Sorry, I was um, promoting the stream. Kind of missed that pool timing, but with the hatchery coming down here, I believe this is 11 pool. No gas this time, by the way. He's going to get the gas after the hatch comes down. So a little bit of a deviation. Just another four lings. And then he's going to grab the gas. Slightly different build here. I'm not sure what the advantages and disadvantages are here. I guess the faster hatchery is probably going to be the advantage. The slower ling speed and layer is going to be the disadvantage. That layer last game was really fast, guys. Remember, it was gas before the second hatch. So he had that timed out very, very crisply. And although he was thrown off slightly, he did manage to pull it together. Now, interestingly, he doesn't send the Overlord this direction right off the bat. He actually sends the first Overlord down here. Uh, I think that's because he's going to have links on the field. He can protect this Overlord as it makes its way up to the top side of the map. So come forward here. He's going to see his opponent completely walled in. Finds the SCV on the map. He's going to go chase that down. And the lair is on the way here. So nice quick lair. Not as quick as last game, but still quite quick. And I mean, he's put the fear of God into HBQ right now. The fear of Muta. He knows that um, Hero is capable of going for that like really, really early Muta count. Uh, especially with the build with the pool first, right? Pool first build. He could be doing that again. But it's, uh, it's a little bit of a mind game here for Miro. He's not going to be doing that. This is this is scary right now. We can't see any of the path from the natural here to our main. He didn't even leave one Ling here. Which I would recommend you guys doing. I guess he's confident that it's not going to be naked Marines moving. But if five Marines suddenly show up here, it can be really scary. Send one Ling to chase. Waiting for the SCV to come back, and then he could dive upon that. But again, scary. It's a little scary. He makes two more Lings. Spire here on the way. Yes, of course, right after the Spire. Gonna drone up. Just a titch more. Just a few more drones, and then two Overlords should pop. Does want to get a little bit more economy than the last game. Well, it's going to be pretty darn close. This way of playing is something I'm not super comfortable with. The, the pool first build uh, style. But it does have its merits. It's not as robust. But uh, it's a very scrappy way to play. I think this drone will be sent for the third. I don't think we're going to send this onto the minerals, are we? I guess he will. It's a little bit unfortunate when around there. These lings, again, are super important. We cannot afford... Just like in the last game, we... C oh, he did send a drone. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, I didn't see that. He can't afford to build a bunch of sunkens here. He really can't. If you're going to hit your middleist timing, you need to delay with the lings. So these links are super, super important. He lost one already. He's going to be extra careful with these now. Not to lose them and to force HBQ to stay in his base. His opponent. Oh, 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 oh free, 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 free. Mine, 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 mine. There we go. He gets it. That's huge. One medic dead. One step closer to a Zerg victory. Getting the uh, plus one a little faster here. And the Mutas are going to pop once again. But you're going to see that this is about 10 to 15 seconds slower than last game. Because he did delay that gas just a bit. 
So here comes the mutas. Remember, he was already killing HBQ on his turrets at six minutes. So his turrets were, were being killed right now. But they're still on their way. So things are a little bit slower. This is more of a normal timed muta attack. Uh, so there's a bit more robustness behind this. It's not all in. We have the third. We can transition this into a different style of game. Can we transition this into a full macro game? Yes, sort of. It's going to be a little bit difficult. But we could go that route. More likely, though, we're going to see like uh, lurkers and or just like ling attack into the front with Mutas harassing, maybe a Mutalisk all in, something like that. Uh, unlikely is what I'm saying, that we'll see like a full on macro game with uh, lurkers down at bottom left and lurkers here. It can happen, but it's not typical from this spot. It's gonna come in, kill a couple of SCVs. He's got that seven count, so it's perfect for one shotting. He's gonna rotate back around here and look for some Marines. See if he can pick off a Marine or two here. And that those Lings still remain very important. Oh, okay, keep that alive. These Lings are still very important for the upcoming fight. Good positioning here. Oh, no, 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 no. We gotta be careful with these Mutas. Let's take a look back at home. The moment that he got this uh, hatchery up, he's been producing nonstop drones out of it. So he did get the extractor immediately. Nothing else going on here except for Overlord and Mutalisk production. Full on Overlord and Mutalisk production is happening here and here. And just drones are being produced here. <clears throat> He's going to start to add those onto the mineral patches soon enough. Jumping in. Going to sacrifice those lings to get a few extra kills. Ah. This is the delicate dance I was talking about, guys. This is the difficult, delicate dance of ZVT. It's so tricky. And you're often going to be stepping on some toes. So, he does unfortunately lose one meter. Oh, I don't like this. This is too much. This is too much, hero. Shouldn't have stayed to, to try and fight that. He did. Um, the medics are very low on energy, so he could actually finish this off. But that was a little bit too rough of a trade. Staying and fighting was not the right choice, I think. But he is going to force everything back. We're waiting on the transition. He's still building just pure muta. Pure muta, pure muta, pure muta. He wants to shut this down before he makes any sort of transition. It is. It appears. So, still making drones over here at the third. Slowly ramping up that economy because he actually needs those drones. Once the transition happens, it'll probably be here. Queen's Nest, Hydroden. But we need those drones in order to make that transition. Because we will still need to produce stuff while that's happening. If we, uh, if we for instance, like use our drones here. Queen's Nest and Hydroden. Um, and we haven't been producing drones here. We haven't been upgrading this economy. And suddenly we're not going to have enough to continue to make uh, Mutalis and uh, Overlords here. So we have to get this economy going. Very, very important stuff. Now coming back in once again. Going to start to pick off more and more Marines here. And see there's only one turret. That's actually maybe a go signal for Hero to dive in. If he takes over, if you kill this turret right here, <clears throat> and you take over this area, you don't actually have to take over the full barracks. As long as you're holding this ramp area, the Marines that are down here on the low ground, they can't really fight up this ramp. It's so easy to just hold position micro this down. And anything that's popping out is going to be easy pickings as well. So we might see him dive in here. It's not enough media yet. He's waiting a little bit longer. But he has thrown down the Hydralis den. We should see the Queen's Nest as well. So he kills off enough. He slows things down enough. <laughs> enough Marine has been thrown. Enough Marine has been sent to the, the sacrificial pits here. 
the Mutilus Glaives have mopped them up well enough that he is going to feel comfortable to make this switch. So we're going to see a Hive. Um, the Hydralis Den, we need to get <clears throat> our Lurker upgrade on the way. And this is all very difficult. We have to do everything at the same time while microing these Mutas. But Hero is going to likely do this flawlessly. One thing I've started to do is actually hotkey this building right as I make it. And of course, you've already got this hotkeyed. So as soon as that pops, you're going to start Lurker from the hotkey. You can see he's pulling back. All this time, as this was flying backwards, he's doing all this stuff in his main. Building the Evolution Chamber. You know, starting these upgrades. Hawking the Evolution Chamber, really important too. So as soon as you make the uh, Hydra Den, you no longer need that... Or as soon as you make the Lurker upgrade, you no longer need that hotkey. You can switch it over to the Evolution Chamber and start your plus one armor. Uh, as soon as that's done. I'm going to dive in now. There are two turrets here. So can't fully dive right now. But it's going to bounce back and forth. Ping-ponging here between the two locations. Picking up a Medic. Really good stuff here by Hero. His flow is just so good with the Mutas. It's really beautiful to watch. You can see how he just kind of effortlessly dances around the circle. Uh, circling the Mutas. Or circling the Marines with the Mutas. And never taking too much damage. Just keeping this Mutalus ball very healthy. Picking off Marines on the side. He sees a few too many. Backs away. Uh, he sees a Medic. Could go for that. Coming back in. Always getting the connections. If this is me, my Mutalus fly in. They don't shoot at all. And then one of my Mutas dies. And things get worse and worse. But he's always getting those shots off. Doing a really good job of that. We do have the scan. But look at how low the energy is on those Medics. Very killable here. Sees another wave coming. But he's got Lurker Eggs on the way. So during all of that kiting and fighting with the Mutas, he was able to produce Hydras. You know, get his plus one started. Get this extra hatchery. Start Lurkers. And get a Sunken Colony as well. It's all just normal Zerg things. To do all of that at, ex at the same time. Kind of crazy. But uh, this, these are the things you need to be able to do to win <laughs> in a ZVG. That's why I say it's the hardest matchup, guys. There's so much going on. There are so many different things you need to do at the same time. This micro looks very nice and fancy. But if you just focus on doing your micro, you won't have all these other tools. You won't have these things ready. You're not going to have the drone counts. You're not going to have the lurkers ready on time. And you're just going to die because... All that the Terran player is doing is making Marines medics and pushing. Uh, he's just focusing on that. He is getting into, of course, his own tech and stuff. But, um... I mean, this is great micro. This is crazy good micro here. HB HBQ kind of leaning into it as well by not um, running back and, you know, making a ball of Marines instead of sitting along this edge. When you can judge the distance perfectly and the Marines aren't running towards you as you attack, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to uh, control your, your Mutas. That's a pretty good stack here. Got quite a few. I'm gonna try to run in here. Yo, that's way too many. <laughs> that's way too many Lurkers. Natus Canal on the way. We've got the Defiler Mount. He should be starting Consume here shortly. Another wave of drones pops out. Gotta make a lot of drones, but you can't be too greedy here. I'm gonna make those drones. We're gonna make a few more hydras uh, for those lurkers. We need to get some scourge as well. He's doing a really good job here. You can see already 48 drones. And the mutas are still, for the most part, alive. First defiler is out. Consume is not done. Three lurkers here. Can he actually break this? I don't think so. The uh, Sunken Colony is going to take up a lot of the uh, aggro. Because he can't target this when it's under the the uh, lurk, uh, under the under Overlord. Going to bring th the Lurkers through the Nidus Canal. And he saves the day. Alright. Very, very well held here. 
very nicely held by hero that was a tense situation man a very tense situation i like him bringing forward the muta during that fight he brought the mutas up in order to tank some damage for the lurkers because the lurkers were starting to get targeted after the sunken went down he just hold position the mutas here so that with the overlord over top of them they can't focus fire and they won't focus fire automatically if the mutas are there too Really, really nice play there by Hero. He bought just enough time for him to survive. He's going to try and break through one more time. Can he actually get in here? Oh, the flying the uh, Mutalus through to get the connection on these vessels. Scourge here. Oh, almost gets the second, uh, the, the, the second vessel here. More Lurkers do pop out. He will get the second vessel. I think HBQ is done. I don't think he's actually going to be able to, to take this. He threw way too much away trying to break this and now we can just easily take the fourth the fourth is going to be very quick to take lings coming out here but he needs actually lurkers over this position one sunken's not gonna hold on for long oh lurkers are stuck oh oh no dude he can't move these lurkers oh my god this is this is the delicate dance guys this is the scariest thing look at this he was building lurkers over here. He can't move this. The lurkers are stuck. If there's a few more marines here, I mean, he wins. Okay, he will be able to run around the bottom. I guess he managed to go around here. That's actually pretty impressive. How did he get down there? So hard to get those lurkers to move sometimes. But he does hold. Now, he has used a lot of his money on lurkers. You can see how many he actually had to build here. This is seven over here. And he's got four over here. Plus he lost a few to, to uh, Marines and uh, Irradiates. So yeah, he built a lot. He did have to build a lot. But now he's got Defiler and he's safe. He just needs to pay attention for drops now. Drops are the next big threat as he adds more hatches in the main. I really like this too. I think this is so smart. I would actually prefer him to put the second hatch here, but it's it's no big deal. It's whatever. Uh, the reason being that sometimes there will be a drop that comes in here, and this hatch might die. And if this hatch dies, you're back to three gas. But if you've got two hatches here, and you just barely manage to save after this hatchery dies, you save this hatchery, you can still mine gas here. And you can still be okay. You just put like four or five on gas. And you can be on four gas while this rebuilds. But if you put it right here, you can obviously do it easier. It's three three gas, but the mineral mining is worse. Three on gas. So I guess maybe it's better to put it here. I'm not sure. But um, I really like him adding two hatches here. And you've got two more hatches here. Why not put two up here? It just, it's like an insurance policy. Yeah, you might drop me. Yeah, you might kill this hatch, but probably you're not going to be able to kill two hatches before I save them. Nice little spore here at the front. Dark Swarm's going to come down. Ah, is this actually going to kill a bunch of drones? Okay, barely not. A little bit scary there. There's the drop, exactly as I was saying. Looks like the Scourge maybe picked off the dropship there. Um, three hatches being no he actually didn't kill the drops so the drops are going to get out um, going to go after these vessels here he gets the dark storm down uh, vessels probably going to fall no vessel stays alive and the marines are going to be able to rotate around this is super annoying this is really really frustrating more links being produced we've got plus one done plus two is nearing completion it's not quite there yet we were getting plus one attack as well we've still got some defenses over here scourge are not in a good place to actually defend drops right now but those drops are probably going to come back in here so maybe it's time to send them over yeah send them over here because uh, probably a drop's going to come through over this direction looks like ling going to be enough to clear that out we do not have a defiler but we have a defiler over here so as long as we pop through and drop the Dark Storm, we should be fine. I wonder if it would be better to put the um, Nidus here. 
because this seems really not good <laughs> this seems really not good guys like having the um this area blocked and let, let's see let's say that you're getting broken here and you need to pop lurkers through to save this spot dude lurkers are gonna bug going through the mineral line here and they can't get through if you put it here i feel like you can pop through a lot easier i don't know it just feels bad man it feels really bad <laughs> if you have to try and run around here it's fine if there's no egg but as soon as there's an egg there it's just it's horrible it's horrible. You're, like, blocking yourself completely. I'm gonna get a plague here, I think. No. No plague. No plague just yet. Some lings out on the map. Looks like HBQ not being, you know, super careful. And having uh, marines out in the front here. So it can allow some lings to go up to the top right. Just gonna make sure there's no base up here. He's not being too greedy. Taking too many expansions. And, okay, we're low on... We could actually see this. What I was just talking about. It's got one lurker. Once this goes down. We we need to pop lurkers through. To potentially save the day here. And. Okay. Look at this. The lurkers have to run all the way around. Pretty rough. Okay. First plague comes down. The lurkers here are going to get some big kills. Ling's going to jump on top of these marines. Very, very nice. Um, Spore here is going to make it very hard for him to get any more uh, irradiates at this point. But he does get one. And it's time for Ultra. Ultras are going to be in the production tab here very, very soon. Fourth gas is up. A lot more drones popping. He's going to 60. 60 drones. I've never had 60 drones in the ZVT in my whole life. That is wild. As well. I mean, maybe in a mech game, but never in like a marine medic game. That is so many drones, dude. That is so much economy. Um, okay, I just started D Matrix. Is he actually gonna try to bust? Oh boy, we've only got two lurkers here. He's just gonna run by. Oh, go after the Nidus. He's not. He's not going after the Nidus. What is he doing? A little bit funny here from Karen. Just going to be able to hold on, no problem. Coming around the back with the Lings, that's probably not going to work. I think these were probably sent through the Nidus, uh, but maybe a misclick. Because sometimes what you want to, like, what you want to do is you click all your Lings, you right-click the Nidus, because that will send them through the Nidus. But then what you do is you sh hold Shift A and then click maybe over here. So all the Lings will then run through the Nidus. As soon as they get through the Nidus, they'll attack this area um but if for whatever reason you know maybe you miss clicking shift and you just click a then they won't run through the nice they'll just run over here happens all the time and if it happens to you like let's say you do this for a defiler you right click the defiler on the nidus and then shift and right click it to the front so that it'll pop through and start running to the front so then you can cast a dark swarm and it doesn't do that correctly like you, you mess up an input or something and then it runs out here and dies you could actually lose the game it's it's pretty painful guys <clears throat> pretty darn painful it's like ling's gonna make their way up here naked marines are not gonna stand a chance against this we've got plus two plus one with crack it's scary hell is scary in fact hbq more naked marines more yum yums being sent to us um really nice control with the SCVs to keep that alive. And he should be able to shut down the vessels coming forward here. Uh, or sorry, the, the defilers coming forward here. The vessels are all going to get plagued, I think. No, he doesn't doesn't drop that. A little bit interesting. That was like a free plague. But GG is called. There you go. HBQ going to tap out. Lings just hitting everywhere. He's not ready for it. I think he was kind of dead from the point where he tried to bust this front with all the, the lurkers there, and he didn't make it through. But that, that such is uh, ZVT, guys. Such is ZVT. You're going to have about four to five chances here as Terran in the mid-game. Uh, after the muta timing is done, once the vessels are out, Zerg just kind of has to sit here and hold everything and defend perfectly. And you're going to have like four or five chances of 
you know, trying to break the front with a D matrix or trying to break this front with a D matrix, maybe a drop, maybe a drop over here, you know, but you only get about four of those. That's all you have. If one of them works, you're going to be in a good spot. You could probably just win the game. But if all four of them fail, things are going to get really hard for you. So that is the, uh, that is the matchup. It's very, very hard to hold on, but Hero doing a brilliant job of it. I think I learned a few things. I'm definitely going to put my Nidus here. <laughs> I, I No disrespect to Hero, but I feel like this would be better. Maybe even, you know what? I wonder if you put the Queen's Nest up and you put the Nidus in between these two, everything has to pop out on this side, right? I wonder... I wonder if the the like it gets blocked or do does everything just keep popping out on the right hand side and then flow really nicely that's something to maybe test out in a single player game anyway we're gonna keep going so again from a hero's perspective this time against soul key we've got hero here in the top left let's see if he does something similar to what he did um, against those other Zerg players earlier. D is he going to go for a hatchery at the natural, or is he going to do like a delayed pool here? It looks like a delayed pool. So this is 12 pool. It's an interesting build, but it, I I don't know if this is the right call against Sulky. Maybe, you know, he definitely knows Soul Key better than I do, but I feel like Soul Key is more of a... He's a 12 hatch player, is he not? Maybe he switched up his style recently, but this is really bad against um a macro-oriented player. Someone who's going to do like a 12 hatch. It's still playable, but it's just... It, you're in a disadvantage. 100%. He's going to go ahead and throw down a hatchery now. Get into that gas. 12 pool is good against like 9 pool. Um, or like an over pool. Um, gas first can be good against as well. You, you probably won't be able to save this if it's 9 pool speed. But you might. You might be able to hold it off if you pull a couple of drones. Um... Any earlier pools than this is it's good against. Really. So we're gonna get those six slings out. And where is he gonna send them? He's gonna send them straight across the map. Okay, he sees the hatchery. They've actually done almost this identical builds here. Maybe a little bit of a later pool. Or no, this is actually 12 hatch, I think. Hold up. I think this is 12 hatch. Or 11 hatch. From Soul Key. So this is actually worst case scenario, I think, for Hero right now. Because you can see, the Lings are going to arrive. And Soul Key's Lings are just popping out. So he has about the same number of Lings as Hero. But at a later time. Which is perfect. He's going to have more Larva. He's going to have a better economy. And yeah, Hero is, um, he's just behind here. Just a little bit behind. It is what it is. Let's see how he plays from this deficit. He's going to go ahead and check the main. Sees the layer timing. It's a bit faster than his layer. Again, everything just a little bit better right now for Sulky. But Sulky has, or he does not have speed. Hero has speed. So he's got that one tiny advantage. Now, the problem with this situation here is that hero has to build sunken he has to there's no choice because if soul key only builds lings he's gonna have the ling advantage and he's gonna win so you have to put this sunken colony down no choice so what he's gonna do is he's gonna drone a little bit he actually added on a couple more drones and he's gonna build the sunken he's gonna threaten run buys uh, probably break off a couple lings here and just kind of hang out. Wait for these lings to leave. Probably be the prudent decision. 
He sees the spire timing. He's going to leave. Spire timing is pretty close. Pretty darn close. You don't need to throw down spores or anything here. As either player. You're going to be all right. So he sees the... Lings are still continuing to hatch. But he's actually going to bail out with the overlords. Um, so we don't know if Solki's just going to keep making lings or not. And that's quite a few lings that he's seeing right now. He does not have enough lings to fight that. Okay, with this number, I think he can be okay. It's going to be tight, though. He needs to build more lings. He needs to build more lings. He can't build drones right now. He's only got enough to saturate his main mineral line and his natural. That is fine. Just, just three on gas. We can make a lot of scourge. We can't make a ton of mutas, but we can make some. This is getting ready for this counter. At the same time, kind of poking out here with the lings. Seeing if he can bait Solki in maybe a little bit. Looks like Solki not taking it at all. Not taking the bait at all. Just going to be in a good position here to defend on both sides. And Hero will have to back off. Oh, okay. He's trying to get a good surround here. I think Solki getting the better end of this, though. Yeah, Solki is definitely going to win this fight. It was kind of a good maneuver. He was trying to get Sulky out of position there. He will slip two lings in. This is a great move. Getting these two lings in. Can he kill a drone? Oh, it's going to be close. Muta's popping out at the perfect time here to hold off. Sulky's so good, man. Sulky's so good. It's so hard to take a win off of this guy. And we're in a tough spot. It's not... The end of the world. But I think that Sulky just has a slight advantage. No matter which way you split it here. No matter what way you slice it. Sulky is in a bit of a lead. It's going to be tough. We need good micro here on the mutas. <clears throat> and getting an advantage through muta micro against Sulky. I mean that's a tall order. Let's see what we can do here. More Scourge popping. Not going to put out any drones right now. Being very conservative. I think we saw one drone was on the minerals for Sulky. So he has one drone advantage. Um, nothing we can do about that right now. We have to keep producing. All of our gas needs to go into Scourge and Mutas right now. All of our minerals into those Mutas and Overlords. Keep hitting this as hard as we can and maybe we can find a route in but it's going to be tough uh the aggressor in these situations i think has a bit of an advantage so it might be uh in the best interest of hero to do something like maybe try to fly in like fly around and fly into the main and hit the mineral line if the mutas are out here at the front. You know, try to get confirmation that the mutas are here with a ling or something. And then come into the main. Kill a couple of drones. And have your scourge waiting in the wings. And as the mutas come back. You fly out with your mutas. And you commit the scourge in onto the, the mutas of your opponent. And in that way you kind of zone the mutas away. And you can escape. Uh, and in if you do that even just one time. You kill like four or five drones. You can bring yourself back. Uh, into a lead. Now, he's actually going to get aggressed upon here, which is a little bit scary. Let's let's actually slow this down a little bit. Because that's one thing I always find really difficult whenever I'm casting ZVZ is just to actually see and understand what's going on. I'm going to slow this down. Looks like he does turn his Scourge onto the Mutas here, and he managed to dodge the Scourge of his opponent. Oh, a good turnaround here. He does get a few good connections, but a Muta came into the natural. That was one of the Mutas of Solki and died immediately to Scourge. So overall, the trade pretty darn even here. We saw some hits coming out of uh, Hero. We saw some hits coming out of the Scourge of Solki. But Hero going to feel confident to actually push across the map. Now, I'm not sure if he's ready for this. Going to go ahead and dive in. Let's slow it down once again. Scourge here are very bunched up. He could start to target some of those down. One Scourge getting targeted there. Overlords are in a precarious position. They are going to eat some shots as well. Let's see if he can uh, 
take a good fight here maybe even things out seems like he has for the most part even things out you don't know if there's drones being we, we've got a thousand foot perspective we can see how many drones have been produced maybe i should even remove that too let's get rid of that so we um can have like the the full one-sided experience here of hero's point of view <clears throat> we don't know if drones are being made right now but we know that if we come out and pressure and he has been making drones we can probably just kill so we have to keep that pressure on we have to keep that threat alive now he's gonna come across the map here maybe gonna go for that play that i was talking about because we did see a lot of overloads over here not a lot of coverage over here a third base on the way third base on the way that's really important information he's gonna get over here maybe kill a couple scourge good scourge kills here before the fight even starts Scourge flying in, getting a few connections here. We're gonna drop down the speed. Units are coming in. That's a few too many. I think we gotta back out here. Does he have Scourge to help him with this escape? Oh, he's gonna dive in with the Scourge. And I think that this is the end for Hero. Hero taps out. He says GG. That was really, really close there at the end. But there's no way out. Unless you have scur Scourge to screen you. You have to send in the Scourge to push back the Mutas so that the uh, your Mutas can actually escape. So that they can't get their moving shot. And he just uh, decided to dive in there with all of his Scourge and Mutas. I mean, it was a tough position. And a very tough matchup. Wasn't really too much that could be done there for Hero. Uh, aside from what he did, which was try to outplay sulky tall tall order to outplay that man he is just so freaking good okay so this is part of a three game set between these two we've got hero down here and an unknown barcode in the top right um last game i probably won't show it in the video hero uh, saw that there was a very fast nexus after forge and he just had an overpool he sent lings and i think the Pro protoss player just kind of screwed up didn't build the the cannon in time and he left the game so it is what it is some of these mistakes do happen on the ladder i'm not above them um make them plenty myself and it is a very crisp opener if you're gonna try and sneak out a nexus that quickly you have to be on top of your probe scout and you have to be quick on building that cannon otherwise you're gonna have to pull a lot of probes links can sneak into your base things can get really wacky so we're gonna have another overpool here out of hero i like it love to see it i want to see more tactics and strategy here out of hero i feel like the last product uh versus products game we did uh not the the very last one not the nine hatch that just won the game at four minutes but the last one that we did in the video i feel like i learned a lot from that um a lot of times when i kill the early zealots i'm still a little bit apprehensive as to what's what i can actually get away with and to see hero delay his hydras hydralis den by as much as he did and just go for single sunken colony at each base and then make mutas and drone to 51 i felt i feel like yeah i feel like that's amazing he just that, that worked out so well for him he's gonna come in here with the probe looks like the probe gonna die what who lets their probe die right now okay he actually killed the drone though and he starts the cannon so he should be okay <laughs> he should be okay but like why does your probe die here what are we c rank or something this is crazy this is really crazy but the third base is gonna come down um it really goes to show that everybody makes mistakes even these players at the highest level he's trying to block really good blocking here slowing down these lings i think that was just enough to let the cannon finish and not allow the links to run by yeah easy peasy third base is on the way gas is coming down here 
That was like a 3.30 gas, actually. So I've been watching, or a 2.30 gas. I've been watching this a lot. Um, and I've been practicing these builds myself. 2.30 gas is going to indicate probably a Hydra Bust with Ling Speed. It's already done. Oh, I'm not 100% sure it was that 2.30 gas, but it just, it, it gives you a little bit more gas than you actually need. There's the Hydra Den. Yeah, so... Hydrogen goes down right in the face of this probe. Not even going to try to hide it here. Hero blazing, brazen with his Hydra Den placement. And only two lings as well. Just two. Not enough to actually kill this uh, probe. And he will just start Hydra Speed right away. He's like, yeah, I'm Hydra List busting you. Like, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Build a bunch of cannons and then I just switch into a macro game? Probably. Build not enough cannons and then I just bust you anyway? Probably. We'll see what happens. Usually, generally, you want the Hydralis bust to be a secret. You want it to be hidden. But there's information. There, there's like an information war that's going on in every single game of StarCraft. And sometimes sending misinformation to your opponent is even stronger than sending no information to your opponent. And I think that's what he's doing right now. He's trying to send a, a miss signal. He's going to see if he can force a response that's not going to be beneficial to Protoss. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. He's going to get the probe now. At least he's not going to allow it in. We can see that this was started at about 4.30. He had the Overlord over here for quite some time. So he definitely saw this start. And that means with the 430 uh, start of this Forge, late Corsair or no, no Corsair is going to be the follow-up here. Probably just a bunch of gateways and uh, a crazy Zealot timing attack. Now, it's a little bit funny that he's moving out right now with the Zealots. Um, because the Zealot speed and plus one is not done. So these Zealots are pretty darn weak. And losing them is going to really slow down your uh, follow-up timing. Um, it's going to go after the Hydras here. But look at this. The Zealots just die. He does see how many Hydras are being made, which is good. But... Uh, so he knows he does have to build cannons. But... We know that his Corsair is delayed. And he just lost Zealots that are going to be precious in defending this natural. The nice things about having those zealots and having the extra gateways in here, which he probably has, he's probably got two or three gateways here, is that you're going to have enough zealots where you don't actually have to build that many cannons because the zealots can run out and fight the hydras um, while the attack is going on. Slow down their attack on this, uh, on these, uh, on, on the cannons. Hatchery's going down. He is transitioning. Running up. He kills one cannon. He kills two cannons. Whoa. He kills three cannons? That was quick. That was really good targeting, man. Dude. Hero moved his Hydras, like, perfectly up to the front there. And got all the snipes. That was very well done. Not easy at all to move your Hydras like that. But he gets them into position here. He kills another cannon. He's just going to get this win right here, right now. It looks like it. Probe's going to be pulled here. Zealots are at the front. There should be another wave of Zealots coming. Probe's not being pulled in front fast enough. He just gets the cannon on the tail end of that. Another few probes going down. Two cannons are back here. I hope he's got another pylon because I think that might be snipeable. That pylon right there. DT about to pop, but we've got two overlords here. And the gateway goes down in time. Where are the Zealots? Are we going to see more Zealots popping out here? More cannons coming down here at the front. Gonna run forward. He gets another cannon. One more cannon here could go down. He's actually targeting the Zealot. And he will shoot down some more probes right now. I think he just gets this cannon. Yeah, he's gonna get it. And I think that he's out of this game. Pro Protoss is dead. There's more Hydras coming. And even behind this, he's got more hatcheries coming up. So he could transition as well. Transition is possible. Three more cannons finish. But uh, the pylon going to go down here. 
Um, yeah, GG. These, these cannons are going to be unpowered. I think only this cannon would be powered. And here we're just going to take this game. Really nicely done. In your face cannon. Uh, a Hydralisk rush here. Killing off the cannons. Very, very well done. Hero. Showing that it doesn't have to be a surprise to work. You know, if you throw that information in their face and they don't react properly, or they send out their zealots to die like that, you can absolutely Hydralisk bust them regardless of whether they know that the Hydra bust is coming or not. Whoa, I've never seen that uh, end before. Wow. Look at look at the frame perfect end of this uh, replay. Have you guys ever seen this? I've never seen that. I'm gonna I'm gonna screen cap that. Maybe I'll use this as a uh, thumbnail for this video. That's cool. I like it. That is very very cool. All right, we're gonna jump into our next one. Okay, here is Hero once again. A third game against this barcode player. Dude, Hero is crazy, crazy good, man. It's so inspiring. I'm actually, I'm going to do some ladder after this, after this on my stream. Just watching players like this, it makes you want to go in ladder. Um, every single time. And then every single time you regret your decision, I think. I'm surprised he's not mining off of this earlier. I feel like this always boosts, does it not? Wait a second. Didn't boost that time. Strange. I thought this one always boosts. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he pulls it off for the spawning pool. Isn't that faster than this one? The boosting one? I, I actually don't know. I guess maybe not. Maybe because it's farther back. Even if it's boosting, it's not as fast as, you know, the direct back and forth here. And also putting the pool here is a little bit funny. I'm pretty sure on this map, if you put the pool here, it helps this one boost. Hmm. Maybe I'm incorrect about that as well. I'm really uh, getting an opportunity to question all my preconceived notions here today, guys. Hero. Hmm. <clears throat> Making me question my reality. This is fantastic plate. Wow, I think he actually missed place that uh, pylon there. <laughs> He's probably going to lose this probe. Oh, it's so close. So, so close. There's Yeah, that was a misplaced pylon. That wasn't even going to block. Um, pretty bad for this <laughs> Protoss player. A little bit sad. That's fine. Um... We're just looking at the openers and the decision making here by Hero. That is our primary goal uh, for this video, for this stream, is to learn a lot of typing. I always hate people who type a lot when we're in game. Like, dude, this game is so hard. I'm not going to type to you at the same time. Why are we doing this? Gonna go ahead and check third base on the way. Starts the gas. I think this is again 230 gas. Pretty close. Maybe like 240, something like that. If you're just going for like a normal um layer timing, you would usually put it down like 250 to three minutes. Anything after three minutes is pretty bad. You're not going to have the layer in time. You're not going to have the spire for the scourge in time. Um, unless it's a gateway first. Sometimes it, if they go gateway first, the gas is a little later. But if it's forge first, you're probably not going to have that in time. Yeah, we don't have the layer here. So it's probably going to be that hydro den. Let's see if it gets... Yeah, it gets speed first and then hydro den. So this is that build that I was talking about before. Speed first, Hydroden. Then you're going to get um, speed links to clear the map and prevent any scouting. And then you're going to Hydra Bust a little later on. This is like... This is a, a newfangled Hydra Bust. It's very, very strong. 
um, because it relies on denying scouting. Oh, what? A fourth. Oh, four hatch hydra. Hold on. Now this is a different, this is a totally different thing. Putting the drones back on gas. I, I didn't even notice that he took the drones off of gas. <laughs> Sorry to say, but um, yeah, he did take drones off of gas to get that fourth hatchery out. I was thinking too much about the, this build here. There's the hydrodan. This is interesting. I need to analyze this actually. Because I've been um been wanting to try this style out. So three drones over here. He's got you know seven here. Eight in the main. Should be going up to nine. Uh, I think he's just all he's gonna do is just get one drone per mineral patch. So like Another, what, seven here? And, you know, another seven here. And then just make pure Hydra. Now, it's not very strong against DT Corsair play because you have so many different locations you have to defend. And you're not going to have a lair. So you won't have Overlord speed, which is a problem. <laughs> but he's actually going to add another hatchery and an evolution chamber here. Wow. <clears throat> going to five hatch hydra on four bases immediately his production is going to be insane absolutely insane if the protoss player doesn't punish correctly dude hero is gonna overwhelm so quick there's the corsair coming in i wonder if you made any extra I wonder if he made, made any extra um, cannons here. Because if he did, he is so screwed. Protoss player is so screwed if he did. You need to make, like, just get your gateways out. Get a bunch of Corsairs. Start flying around. Get your DTs really, really fast. Um, get Storm. You need all that tech because he can't... He, he will come and try and break you um, if you don't have DTs out. But you need to get the pressure going. Because this is crazy. Look, not a lot of drones. Not a lot of drones at all. We've got seven here. Only five here. He actually needs to send this over here because it would be six, almost perfect saturation. Um, five here. We need to get to seven. Um, it's a funny build. Nine, seven, seven, seven. I guess you could call it. Has one overlord over here. He probably want to pop another overlord, honestly. Yeah, there we go. Because if he get, dives on that and there's a DT coming, oof. Oof, it gets scary. Um, Hydras are going to start to pop en masse here. Just, just crazy numbers of Hydras are going to start to pop out. Oh, no. He left this overlord alone. This is really bad. Okay. Um, Hero could actually lose uh, if he messes this up oh he has one overlord oh this overlord was missed that is huge that this overlord was not spotted now he could bust the front um if there if if this overlord was sweeped the dt pops and the hydras just can't do anything but with the overlord here he should be able to hold everything dts are going to start to hit the field but the dt at the front gets killed oh man this is good play from Hero. Uh, everything except for losing the Overlords here, I think is fantastic. He is going to get the new Overlord over here. Needs a few Hydras to defend this. He's going to start to poke at the front again. Hiding this Overlord was actually so big, it's crazy. He really needed to sweep this Overlord. Ah, Templar pops out. He gets it for free. That's huge. He's probably just going to bust him. There's one Templar. One Templar doesn't have energy. Can he actually get in here and kill this? Ah, uh, he can't he can't hit the can't hit the forge. Can't hit the forge. I think there's gonna be storm time in time now. So drones are gonna pop out here. Full on drone production for Hero. He's got a lot of hydras ready. He has Overlord spread. Um, not a lot of defense over here, unfortunately. So if there was a DT on the map, could have done massive damage, but he knew for a fact that there wasn't going to be one. Um, the timing just adds up there. 
uh, the DT, the first DT that popped out was the first DT. And this is something that I have a, a bit of a struggle with, uh, knowing when the DTs can possibly on, be on the map. But uh, Hero seems to have it mapped out completely. Eight minutes, you're not really able to have that out. <clears throat> About nine minutes is when you have Templar with Storm, so it makes sense. They both come from the same building. Um, and they both require the same building. Um, another storm. Doing some damage, but not really picking off too much. And Hero's in complete control of this game. He's got so much going for him right now. He's got plus one done. He will have Overlord Speed. Uh, if he doesn't have it already. Actually can't see that. Have it on the way. Is it done? It's not actually moving any Overlords right now, so I can't tell. Okay, it is done. So he does have Overlord Speed done. And the hatch reproduction is insanity. He's going to get so many hatches right now. He hasn't had to build a single sunken. He's got great saturation. Near perfect on all these bases. He's going to add some more. So that he can just have an insane amount of supply. Um, and I don't know that Protoss can take this base, man. He's going to throw down some storms. But sacrificing some Hydras for storms right now is is fine. You, you're not worried about that at all. The Zealot number is not big enough to actually challenge you. So uh, even if the Zealots get committed onto the Hydras, it's just not going to matter. And Lurker is on the way right now. Dude, this is a powerful build. This 5 hatch or 4 hatch Hydra. Taking 4 bases early. Oof. Protoss just not able to punish properly. And this is going to get so scary. With Lurker here in the front. I think we're just about at the end game here. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. We might have a drop or something. So I'm going to watch the minimap carefully. But I don't think we're going to be able to break out of here. It's good dodging. Excellent dodging with the Hydras. Um, that was a pretty good storm, but... It's just Dragoon now. Purely Dragoon. Ooh, great storm there. Still watching the minimap. I don't see any drops around. He's almost going to break out of here. It's pretty close. But more and more Hydras are coming. And he's actually... He's managed to make a hole. Where he can start to get out. Which is pretty impressive for this Protoss player, but... He doesn't really have the uh, storms necessary to fight the next wave of Hydra. And I think he's pretty much out of this one. That's way too much Hydra. Yeah, we're at a point now where there's almost no coming back. 46 drones are available. He's going to take a fifth base now. His supply is absolutely bonkers. Dodging a couple of storms here and there. Um... But even eating big storms is not going to matter too much because the Hydra number is way too big. Uh, and he will just break through. GG. Damn. Hero. So freaking good, man. I'd love to see this guy in the ASL finals. He is amazing. He deserves an ASL title at some point. I don't, I don't know if it'll be this season, but dude. This guy is insane. Now, I really want to go and do some ladders, so... I'm going to go ahead and hop into that. If you guys want to join me, hit me up at SanSC on Twitch. You can come take a look. Watch live. Give me some pointers if you want to. Um, we're going to be grinding up. We're at 1900 on the ladder right now. We're going to be working our way up into A rank here. Hopefully within the month. That's kind of my, uh, my forecast here. We've been playing a lot and practicing a lot. Learning a lot. So... We may be able to make that happen. But guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.